Jared and I uh, survived our cruise, but on the cruise I came down with a cold. So that's why I have a sound the way I do. I still have some congestion. I don't think I can spread anything, but I'll try not to breathe on anybody when you come up for communion. Uh, so today is a very special day because we're all gathered together in one place to worship and uh, praise our Heavenly Father in Jesus. And uh, so this morning we will be following the order of worship in our boat. And uh, we just pray the Lord's blessing be upon us as we gather here so the Holy Spirit can fill us uh, with His grace and His power and His joy so that we can praise Him with all of our hearts and all of our minds and all of our souls. So please rise as we begin our worship by singing our opening hymn, Lord, Take My Hand and Lead Me. Almighty 
God in his mercy has given his son to die for you and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
Behold, now is the visible time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. We put no obstacle in anyone's way so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way by great endurance in affliction, hardship, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labors, sleepless nights, hunger, by purity, knowledge, patience, and kindness, the Holy Spirit, genuine love, by truthful speech and the power of God, with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left hand, through honor and dishonor, through slander and praise. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold, we live, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful, yet always rejoicing, as poor, yet making many rich, as having nothing, yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted in your own affections. In return, I speak as to children. Widen your hearts also. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. Please speak to God. <laughs> Boy, you listed a lot of bad things that are going on back in those days. I thought that only happened these days. Anyway, Barbara, I was told by the pastor to tell you, even though I've told you before, that this is not Barbara Billingsley of Beaver Cleaver. <laughs> 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 and this is our swan song for the, uh, what is it, 2023-24 fire season. Oh, okay. The 24-25 will begin in two or three months.
Jesus said to them, Let us go across to the other side. And leaving the crowd, they took him with them in the boat, just as he was. And other boats were with him. And a great windstorm arose, and the waves were breaking into the boat, so that the boat was already filling. But he was in the stern, asleep on the cushion. And they woke him and said to him, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And he awoke and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. He said to them, Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? And they were filled with great fear and said to one another, who then is this that even wind and sea obey him? This is the gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. We'll sing our hymn of the day. Another great hymn.
Amen. Many years ago, Redeemer sent Sharon and I on a vacation to Belize. I know I've told this story before, so those of you who have heard it, please bear with me. We stayed on Ambergris Key, which was several miles from the mainland and a large island. And one day we decided to go on a boat excursion to the mainland to visit some Mayan ruins, which meant going across to the mainland in this boat that was probably about 30 or 40 feet long and maybe about 10 feet wide. And it had two large uh, motors, outboard motors on the back. And we were supposed to be back at the resort before it was dark. But on the way there, uh, we were informed that we blew one of those outboard motors. And we only had one left. And that that might cause a problem on the way back. Well, after we finished our tour, we got to the mouth of the uh, river, and uh, because of the sandbar, our tour guide didn't think his boat could make it over with all of us in it. So he had called ahead and had this guy come put putting up to the boat in this little, uh, like a rowboat with a little motor on the back, and had most of us get into the rowboat. And he left two guys, big guys, out of the, and had them sit on the bow. And he said, we're gonna try to get across the sandbar and you guys will meet us out in the Caribbean. Well, we watched, they were fortunate, we watched that boat get across. And here we were going across the sandbar in this little boat with no life jackets on. And we get out to the mouth of the river. Everything was fine. It was really calm. It wasn't deep or anything till we got to the ocean. And then the water's choppy, and we're put putting out to that boat. And our boat's banging up against the side of that boat. And we quickly get up as fast as we can out of that little boat back into our tour boat. However, that wasn't the end of the problem because it was still a little stressful because it started getting dark. And here we were in this boat with one motor with a couple small running lights out on the Caribbean <laughs> in the dark, trying to get back to our island, which I think it took at least an hour or so to get back. And having been on a cruise, a Disney cruise, at night you're moving, we're thinking, we're not the only boat that <laughs> might be out here. But fortunately, the tour guide had a lot of mixed drinks left, <laughs> <laughs> which he plied a lot of us with those uh, <clears throat> drinks. And Sharon said, one of the ladies, I won't say everything she said, but she said, get me off this boat. <laughs> <laughs> well, the reason I'm bringing that up is because our gospel reading is about Jesus and his disciples in a storm. And while we had this adventure in this little larger boat than they had, which had outboard motor, except for that little putt-putting in that little fishing boat, we had some daylight and we had some calm water. But those disciples, when they got in those boats there at the Sea of Galilee, it might have been a clear day when they started and clear skies, but what happened? It ended up in a violent storm which threatened their lives. And to kind of put things in perspective, I looked up how big is the Sea of Galilee. Well, actually, it's rather a lake. And it's only 13 miles long, 8 miles wide, and 140 feet deep at the deepest. And if you've ever been in North Carolina, I know Dolly's going there. It's about the size of Lake Norman, basically in North Carolina. So it's not a sea, it's rather a lake. However, it's also 700 feet below sea level. We're right here, we're probably 700 feet above sea level. But that's 700 feet below sea level. 
And at the very southern end, there's these cliffs where the rivers run into it. And when the winds come from the south, they get funneled through those cliffs and it causes violent squalls on the lake with wind gusts and with churning waves. So when you're 13 people and you're in a boat and they found boats like this, 27 feet long, seven and a half feet wide and four and a half feet deep, and you're in a squall, you are in serious trouble. Especially when it's dark, their boat is filling with water, and that Greek said, that Greek word said, it was filling up with water, and you're trying to bail out, and there's Jesus, calmly asleep on that back cushion, oblivious to the danger. Now, I don't think any of us plan, at least I don't plan on it, going on a trip on a small fishing boat in the Sea of Galilee, especially in a storm. But there's several lessons we can learn from this that can help us when we're in bad situations. And first of all, we need to realize and accept that our lives can often change quickly and dramatically in a second. Just like those sudden squalls on the Sea of Galilee can engulf boats and threaten the lives of people on them, we can be suddenly involved in an accident of some kind. We can be engulfed by a natural disaster which happened all the time in different kinds. We can suddenly be afflicted by some kind of serious illness, or even there's the threat of violence. And we have to realize that even though we're Christians, it's gonna happen. And especially the older we are, as we get older, there's going to be more of them, right? Because there's more opportunities. So we live in a world that is full of chaos and conflict and danger, which we can't escape no matter how hard we try. Even though some people have tried to do it through drugs or alcohol or trying to isolate themselves from all danger or even denying the reality. And as quickly as life changes these days, we can't anticipate or be prepared for every one of them. And that is why number two, the way we respond when we're in a disaster or a bad situation is very important. Now, unfortunately, much of the time, I don't know about you, but me, we respond like Jesus' disciples did, when they probably tried to bail that water out and then realized, well, I mean, Jesus is there at the back of the boat. Let's go wake him up. I mean, they panicked. Now, I, I know I've said this before, and bear with me, but as someone who suffers from panic attacks, I can really relate to the apostles in that situation. <clears throat> because when you have a panic attack, you're, that adrenaline is exploding throughout your body. You can't think clearly, and your body functions are all out of whack. So that you actually feel like you're dying, and you're panicking because there's no way to stop it. Now, most of my panic attacks have occurred when I was consciously aware of a stressful situation. I was in or perceived stressful situation coming up, like taking a test or speaking before a crowd or afraid of not meeting other people's expectations or being rated by, for my performance, 
But many of those attacks came unconsciously. When I thought I was taking things fine, but then the panic hit. Now, I don't have those panic attacks like I did in the past because I'm taking, I'll be honest, I'm taking medication now, which kind of takes the edge off. And I regret not going for help and getting meds to deal with it years before, but I didn't. Because they started when I was in the Air Force, and I had a top secret security clearance. And I didn't want to take any kind of drugs or something that might jeopardize that clearance. And then later when I became a pastor, and I've had panic attacks before here when I was the pastor, I didn't want to let people know because I was also afraid that I might lose my call, that I might lose the congregation. But those attacks ceased mostly because then I learned to rely upon Jesus. I learned to turn to God's word. I learned to let the Holy Spirit fill me with his calm with the raging storm that was going on around me and even in me. And it is embarrassing for me to say that as a pastor, I reacted just like those apostles did in that boat. I panicked. Especially when a pastor, I know Jesus is right there with me. But then again, I'm human, <laughs> just like everyone else, just like those apostles in that boat who we often hold up as models of faith and devotion. That is why we need to trust in Jesus whenever we feel threatened in any way. That's what the apostles did when they finally aroused Jesus in their panic and said, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And we might often feel that very same way. When you're in a panic attack and it doesn't go away right away, you might feel that same way when you're in a bad situation and everything is totally out of your control. And especially if it goes on for some time. And we're tempted to think, Lord, look, I'm one of your disciples. Why is this happening to me? If you really cared about me, are you asleep? If you really cared about me, I wouldn't be in this situation in the first place. However, as Jesus indicated, it really is a matter of faith. Because when he calmed the sea, Jesus told them, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Now, according to Mark's gospel, at this point in their discipleship, even though they followed Jesus, they might have considered him to be a great teacher, or that word could be master, because he impressed them with his teachings and his healings. They might even have believed that he was the promised Messiah, but they did not fully grasp or understand who Jesus really was until that storm. And that's why I believe that Jesus often allows us to go through storms and lets them go on even for a while. He's not sleeping. He wants us to come to him and to receive the calm and comfort and consolation only he can give us through his Holy Spirit. Because you see, they would not have, at that point, they would not have simply called him teacher or were filled with great fear and said to one another, who is this? that even the wind and sea obey him. 
if they really believed in him and understood as the son of God himself in that boat. Now, when you're having a panic attack, you're afraid that you're going to die. But I think it goes deeper than that. Because when you have those attacks, you think about your, if you're dying, you think about your life. And I would think of all the sins I have committed in my life and that I did not deserve eternal life. And even a person that doesn't believe, they still have a conscience. And I think that's why when they are in dread, and even though they're agnostics or whatever, they'll call out to God, right, for help. However, what really got me through those panic attacks was not those meds, but rather, like I said, trusting in Jesus. I learned to immediately go to God's word, which reminded me of my Heavenly Father's love for me, loving me unconditionally, reminding me that Jesus really is the Son of God, and that he has the power and the authority over everything, including Satan and death and hell, and that he paid the full price for my sins and your sins, and rose again, so that through faith in him, which the Holy Spirit works in us, we can't do it ourselves, gives us the gift of an eternal life. So now, whenever I have a panic attack, and I feel like I'm dying, the Holy Spirit enables me to believe. And I think, you're not dying, because that's what you think. You're not dying. But even if you do, you are going to be with Jesus. Because Jesus is not only the great teacher, he's not only the great master, he's not only the great healer, he's not only the great miracle worker, Jesus is the only begotten Son of God. Jesus is our Lord and Savior. And not only saves us physically, many times when we're not even aware of it, he also saves us spiritually and especially eternally. So that when we do pass through a tumultuous sea in our lives, we know that in Jesus, we will safely land on that heavenly shore. In his name, amen. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding keep our hearts and our minds in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. In his precious name we pray, now and always, amen. I ask you now to please rise. We will profess our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord, Jesus Christ, Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, 
whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. We'll gather together our gifts, our tithes, and our offerings. <coughs> Give suitable rain for the growth of crops, 
Protect those engulfed by storm, especially those in our own nation, and especially for those in other nations, that we may call upon you in faith in every trouble, trusting for Christ's sake. He will work everything for our eternal good. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. For those in need, especially for Tina and Ada, Gary and Carol, Frank, Charles, Ethan, Stella, Faith and Rowan, Mac, Diantha and Carl, Jamie, Lou, Marge, Mary Lou, Jenna, Butch and Jason, Sissy, Bonnie, Jan and Bill, Dawn, Matthew, Terry, Paul and Tom, Ted, Joe, Vicki, Judith, and Cheryl. We pray your Holy Spirit be upon them in a very special and powerful way, that you grant healing for them of every affliction of mind, body, and soul. We also pray especially for Jim and Blake as they have uh, learned they have cancer. We pray, Heavenly Father, that your Holy Spirit may walk, work to the doctors and the nurses and the medication to remove that cancer from their bodies. But most of all, Heavenly Father, we pray that you give all those who suffer the peace and calm for their troubled consciences, that they would not, knowing that you would not reject their prayers, and that you will keep them faithful. And we pray, Heavenly Father, that you continue to teach us to trust fully in you. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the church gathered here in Holy Communion, as we join with the sons of God and shout for joy to receive Christ's true body and blood, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. mercy. Hear us, Heavenly Father, for the sake of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good right and salutary <coughs> that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and everlasting God, for the countless blessings you so freely bestow on us and all creation. Above all, we give thanks for your boundless love shown to us when you sent your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into our flesh and laid on him our sin, giving him into death that we might not <coughs> die eternally. Because he is now risen from the dead and lives and reigns to all eternity, all who believe in him will overcome sin and death, and will rise again to new life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Trust in him. 
We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit that we may faithfully eat and drink of the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the same night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after he had eaten, and after he gave thanks, he gave it to them and said, Take and drink of it, all of you. This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you drink it, do so in memory of me. We are gathered together in memory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who is not only master over the sea and waves and wind, but he's also the master of our lives. He's the master of everything in creation. And he went and suffered and died on that cross and shed his blood to redeem us from sin and death and hell, so that through faith in him, we can have that gift of eternal life. So that as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Amen. Come soon, Lord Jesus. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen.
salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace. Amen. Amen. Okay, announcement. Of course, uh, there is our insert with our Bible school coming up in August. And one thing that you can help us with is to start saving uh, clear bottles, plastic bottles. Uh, <coughs> little ones up to what, two, two liter bottles. You can use them to make bubbles, um, to represent bubbles. So if you can save this for us. And also, the um, noiseless offering during the month of July will be dedicated to BBS. Just give you a little heads up. Okay, do we have a meeting tomorrow? No, July right. 1st. Right, okay. What's in, what's in the bowl? Uh, anything else? Okay, yeah. I just want everybody to know next Sunday there will not be communion. It's the fifth Sunday, so we, unless it's a festival Sunday, in one job walk in and find somebody forgot to say And since we don't have communion, we might want to have worship down at the pavilion. Hopefully it's not going to be 90 degrees back then. Mm. But so well, let's think about having worship in the pavilion next week. We have your keyboard. It's in the yes. Okay, we have a keyboard and we have a new sound system? Yes. We have a new sound system. And let's see. Oh, if it, if we are playing on it. And there's going to be a sign when you drive in on that one sign there about no trespassing or whatever it says. There will be a sign there that says we're worshiping the pavilion for sure. But let's plan on it for sure. And if it, you don't see the sign, then you know we're in here, okay? Uh, let's see. I think that's... Oh, uh, they're still using our uh, facilities this week, so... Those two tables, could somebody bring them back here to the church on the side? And I set up a couple tables back there for fellowship and some chairs, so you might want to take those away because uh, I got them from the side. Uh, I think there were three tables. I, there's one, but those other two tables go up to the front there and the chairs on the side. So if you could do that, uh, that'd be great. Okay, so let's uh, conclude our worship by singing, Here I Am, Lord. So don't you think that instead of it said, no trespassing, it should say, forgive us our trespassing?